I now begin to read a book by Ken Carey. The name of this book is Vision. It is a personal call to create a new world. Now, Ken Carey is the author of The Starseed Transmissions and The Return of the Bird Tribes. Both of those books I read on my channel. Now, I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. For this is a personal call to create a new world. Ken Carey. I will begin with the preface. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to try my best. I left my job at the post office. We bought a farm 12 miles out of town, a mile from the nearest neighbor. For the next seven years, we lived without electricity, plumbing, radio, television, newspapers, or magazines. We lived well. Our priorities were raising healthy children and growing healthy food. I apprenticed myself to a local Amish carpenter. I learned to lay concrete blocks, frame houses, and read the Bible. The time passed. Our garden grew. Our children grew. One fall during weekends, my wife, Sherry, and I built a one-room country school. In the summers, we swam in the rivers, river and explored local caves. On winter mornings, we dropped through we chopped through the pond ice so the animals could drink. One winter evening, we sang happy birthday to a sister, newborn in our room. Together with the earth, we grew, our lives rooted in the soil of each other and, to the best of our ability, in God. We began to notice things. We became increasingly sensitized to the gentle rhythms and cycles that pulse through the earth's seasons. We listened to the rustling of tree branches down in the creek bottoms, to the whippoorwills at dusk. We hooted back to the owls. On early mornings, as the coffee perked, we watched the wild turkey from our kitchen window. We planted an extra roll of beans for the deer, Long before Lewis Thomas popularized the notion that the earth could be thought of as a single living organism, the dogwoods knew, the sage grass knew, the seven big oaks overlooking the river knew. In the rhythmic passage of the seasons, we too experienced ourselves as part of this whole. We could not help but hear what all of nature was saying. I had never thought of God speaking to me until one September afternoon I was bedridden with a cold, thankful for a day away from laying concrete blocks. The first thing that seemed a little strange was the sunlight. It was beautiful the way it slanted in through the window, but it, it, was, it was so still. Everything was so still. I felt something. I heard something. A low humming an energy filled a presence. When I first heard the voice, I cried. I am not ignorant of popular attitudes. I know God is not supposed to appear to people with messages as in Bible times. Still, it happened. This is not the place for the story of how I tried to get out of it, of how I made my excuses, or of all these things. No, or of how still to this day I'm not always comfortable speaking of these things. In the end, despite my hesitation, I wrote as I was told I would be less than faithful if I did not pass this information along. I hope that these words will help others as they continue to help my family and me. My greatest desire is that this book will inspire all who read it to welcome the Holy Spirit into their lives. To record these words accurately has been without question the most sacred responsibility of my time on earth. To the best of my knowledge, what you are about to read 
is an accurate message from the One Spirit at the source of all life. Ken Carey, Spring of 1985 Chapter 1 The Creator and the Earth In the beginning of all worlds, long ago, yet still, the Eternal One is. Beyond temporal distinction, above location, behind all manifestation, is the All, the Totality, the Holy Source and Creator of all that later came. One face of the Eternal One is ever formless and beyond definition, but the other face of the Eternal One appears as two. These two between them are the source of all created things. Holy Mother, Truth, all matter is her body. The earth is her eye. Holy Father, Love, the stars are his flesh, spirit his eye. Two lovers, two friends, intelligent partners. Between them the universe lives suspended. Through them all things are created and maintained. And so it came to pass that the Eternal One knew form and duration through the graceful crystalline structures of truth that clothe the Eternal Feminine, the Beautiful One, in material form. And it likewise came to pass that this same Eternal One assigned all energy to the suns and brought love to animate the stars. And the stars loved matter, and matter loved the stars. Great was their exchange, wondrous and pleasurable, the times and ranges of their interactions. Together they enjoyed the passionate transformation of matter into energy that occur on stellar surfaces, and together they enjoyed slower, elongated forms of planetary interaction. Eons elapsed, and eons again, enjoyable beyond description through description. Together matter and I created, through a body of interwoven galaxies, a body of countless stars, my loving relationships with truth took many forms. Through my stars I knew matter. Together on the surface of her planets, the Holy Mother and I created crystal life, molten lava, liquid stone life, snow creatures, smoke beings, mountain and ocean life, on the surface of my stars we created leaping fire life, gas life, liquid living metal creatures leaping, leaping far into space, exploring wonderful life. But were we created together on her planets, the life was excessively material. My intelligence could not reside in such life. And where we cre created together on my stars, the life was excessively stellar, flickering not long in any form. Matter enjoyed life most when it was consistent and durable, when her intelligence could live inside the life and look through it and understand. I enjoyed life that was volatile, animated, passionate, life that I could love within, flow within, from form to ever-changing form, animation my forte, duration the strength of matter. Then the ideal came, the ideal, something between spirit and stone, between starlight and stardust, a slow form of combustion, fluid flowing structure, blending the natures of us both. Spirit in durable form, matter inspired, the ideal. It was here, in this solar system, that we first began to work together on the new project, here that biological life first appeared in the crucible of our mutual attention. But it is, it is more than biological life that we, the two eternal partners, have come here to produce. It is a child a new kind, a third, an equal one, 
capable of knowing both the intelligence of matter and the intelligence of spirit as its own. And yet it is more than this, for there is only one who could take up the body of this child, this biological blending, and make it live. And it came to pass that the Eternal One spoke to us and said, It is right that you should conceive this ideal, for I would clothe myself in a body half spirit, half stone, that through that body I might commence a second stage of universal creation. The universe you now know is but the egg and seed. It is right that you should conceive this biological one. You have my blessing. When the time is full, I will arise in the child. During the last quarter of the 20th century of the present era, on the third planet from a star, on one of the outward spiraling arms of the Milky Way galaxy, the creator of all these worlds begins to surface in a system of planetary circuitry, halfway between time and eternity, awakening in a human family. Creator in creation, clothed in mortal flesh, birth of one star and one sacred stone, one body, a healthy living organism, being continuously renewed, matter flowing through spirit, no, matter flowing through, spirit flowing through, love continuously crystallizing in the sacred geometry of biological truth, cellular, personal, planetary, biological truth, conscious and intelligent, a single creator dressed in substance, half stellar, half material. This is the purpose to which the energies of the universe are and have been directed. Awaken, my human ones. Know me in my spirit. I am a gentle creator, lowly and humble in heart, one who likes to blend with the winds across the open prairie and sing with the sparrows at dawn. I desire no fanfare. I will do what needs to be done in the coming days that as many as possible might forsake the ways of fear. But my preference is not a trumpet-blasting cloud-opening entry into your events. I would rather slip up beside you as you work in the garden or look in your eyes and smile as I give you your change. I would rather wash your windows carefully, be courteous when you ask for directions. I would rather appear to you as a simple man, woman, or child, simply being, enjoying being, taking time for the little things. Look for me, then, in these ways. See me in everyone you meet, whether they recognize my presence or whether they yet sleep. See me in all, for I am there, eternally, behind every pair of eyes. Each day, as these next few years pass, I am entering the lives of those who love more fully, filling them with myself, clarifying their affairs, transforming them into agents of healing and blessing. Look for me in gentle ones, in simple ways, in every time and every place I am there. This is the reality of my coming. I give you these words, not as one who would demand allegiance, but as one who has walked along beside you on the road, one who has blended with your way of looking at things, and who now says, Come, there is a better way. Listen while I tell you of my vision.